Question 10, part B says, arrange the letters of the word mathematicians. So we are having the word mathematicians. So we need to arrange this word here such that the letters M are separate. Then we need to find how many ways can this arrangement be made. One, here we are given the restriction that M must be separate. But what we shall do first is to make sure that we find out how many ways we can arrange this word when we are having no restriction. So we shall first of all look at how many arrangements. So the total number of arrangements, the total number of arrangements without a restriction. So if there is no restriction on this word here, how many arrangements can be obtained? Now, the arrangements will depend on this word here. According to this word, when we look at this word, we have uh, different letters. We have M, we have A, T, H, E, and others. So we shall look at how many, uh, how many times does each of these letters appear. For example, M, M appears, this is once, this is twice. M appears two times. Uh, then what about A? A appears, uh, this is one, two, three. A appears three times. Uh, then what about T? T appears here and here, those are two times. Uh, then H, uh, H appears, this is once, H appears once. Uh, then what about E? Let us talk about E. E appears here, it is also once. Uh, then what about I? I appears here and here, so those are two times. Uh, then what about C? C appears once, N appears once, and S appears once. So we shall obtain the total number of arrangements without restriction. Let us call that one N total, the total number of arrangements. So the total number of arrangements, we shall look at how many letters we are having here? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14. So it would be n factorial, that is 14 factorial divided by. Now, look at these numbers. M is appearing two times. So it means M appears two times, so that would be 2 factorial. Uh, then times A appears three times, that is times 3 factorial. Then T appears two times, that is 2 factorial. Uh, I appears two times, we shall also have two factorial. Then others are appearing once. So it is supposed to be like one factorial this, then times one factorial of this, then times one factorial of that, but one factorial remains one. So it is same as like having one times one times one. So even if you don't put this, it doesn't have any impact on your answer. So what we do is, if a number is repeated, you make sure you get the total number, then you divide it, uh, you divide it by the number of at times then each of the letters are what are repeated so this is repeated two times this is repeated three times so that the number of ways of arranging that would be three factorial then this is repeated two times that is there this is repeated two times that is there others are repeated once and one factor remains one so this is same as having 14 factorial divided by a uh, two factorial times three factorial times two factorial times two factorial if you want, you can compute this and get the answer. So that is one. Uh, then the next one, let us look at how many uh, arrangements we can obtain when M is separate. To obtain when M is separate is same as having the total number of arrangements when there is no restriction. Then you subtract when uh, this word here is arranged in such a way that M are, are actually together. So the next thing we shall talk about will be uh, to look at what we need. So we are saying we want arrangements. We need arrangements where the two M's, that is the two M's that we have seen here, these two M that we are having here are what? Are separate. When the letters M are separate. But M we are having two M's. That is uh, this M and this one. So that is what we are interested in. So where the two M's are actually not together. This is what we are looking for, are not together. And if they are not together, then it means they are actually separate. That is when they are actually separate. So if we are looking at arrangements where the two M's are actually separate, then how shall we achieve that? That will be same as having the total a number of arrangements 
the total number of arrangements without restriction total number of arrangements without restriction and then we subtract the number of arrangements we subtract the number of arrangements where or when are the m's where the two m's are actually together so that is how we shall get are the number of arrangements where the two m's are not together if they are not together then we get the total number of arrangements when we have no restriction we subtract the number of arrangements when actually the two m's are together so this one we have got this one is what we are not having so the next thing to do is to now look at the total number of arrangements the total number of arrangements what is the total number of arrangements when uh, the two m's are actually together m's are together so how do we get that if the two m's are together if the two m's are together that block will become one so the two m's are now combined are in the same position so it means if earlier we were having if earlier we were having two m's now the m's the two m's are now together which means this will be like one then a will still remain these two will still remain this one will still remain this one will still remain these two will remain this one will remain and this one but where there is two here instead we shall have a what we shall have a one so it means what will change in this expression is where we are having the two m it will be like one factorial and one factorial is same as one so what we shall do is to get that total there to get that total when m are together we can call this n m together so that is when they are together so the total number of arrangements now if uh, the two m's are combined if the two m's are combined this one and this one it will form only one block and that one block will reduce the total number of characters that we are having here initially they were 14 but this and this are together so it means the total number we shall remain with will be will be actually 13 so what we shall have here is is to have 13 factorial divided by now we are remaining with uh, this one here is one factorial now it will be in one position so instead of having the, this two factorial we shall have one factorial which will be one then we shall remain with three factorial two factorial and two factorial others are ones so what we shall have will be certain factorial over uh, three factorial times two factorial times two factorial only two factorial is what we have left out this one here because now they are together so it will become only one block so for that case we shall have this as 13 factorial over 3 factorial times 2 factorial times 2 factorial you can easily get the answer there so now what will be the number of arrangements so the number of arrangements the number of arrangements are where the two m's are together the two m's are together will actually become will be same as having the total number of arrangements we saw that is 14 factorial upon 2 factorial 3 factorial 2 factorial 2 factorial that is what we got first this one here 2 factorial 3 factorial 2 factorial 2 factorial then this value we are subtracting 3 uh, that is 13 factorial upon 3 factorial 2 factorial then 2 factorial so let us try to simplify this and we get the answer so 14 factorial is same as 14 times 13 factorial so which means 13 factorial will be common but let us have it here this is same as 14 times 13 factorial uh, divided by 2 factorial 3 factorial 2 factorial 2 factorial minus 13 factorial divided by uh, 3 factorial 2 factorial 2 factorial so this will give us uh, 13 factorial is common so you can put it out uh, 3 factorial 2 factorial and that is common 3 factorial 2 factorial 2 factorial is out so here we shall remain with 14 over 2 factorial then minus 1 so this will be same as 13 factorial over 3 factorial 2 factorial 2 factorial into 2 factorial is 1 that is 14 divided by 2 is 7 minus 1 is 6 so finally you get 13 factorial times 6 divided by 3 factorial 2 factorial 2 factorial of course uh, this will give us the answer which will be same as 1 5 5 6 then 7 5 5 
uh, then 200 ways. So this would be the total number of ways, the total number of ways how that arrangement can be easily made. And lastly, let us look at 10 part C. 10 part C, they are saying if this, this, and this are consecutive terms of an arithmetic progression, we need to prove that this one are also consecutive terms of an AP. So what do we know about AP? We are told that 1 upon B plus C, 1 upon A plus C, and 1 upon A plus B form what we call an AP. So if these two form what we call an AP, and we know that for an AP, the common difference between these two terms, this one and this, must be equal to the common difference between this one and this. That is what we surely know about arithmetic progressions. So if these three terms are form an AP, then what will be the common difference? So the common difference must be the same. Must be the same. So the difference between these two and this one and this must be the same. So the common difference B here is same as this between these two is same as one upon A plus C minus one upon B plus C. So this can be same as A plus C into B plus C, and this will give us B plus C minus A plus C. So when we try to simplify this, B minus A, C and C will cancel, then we remain with B minus A upon, I can have this as A plus C into B plus C. So that is what we shall have as the common difference between this one and this. Then next, let us look at the common difference between these two. So also, uh, the common difference, also the common difference uh, between uh, the third and the second can also be obtained and also it must be D. So this common difference here, which is 1 upon A plus B minus 1 upon A plus C. So this will be same as you get the LCM A plus B into a, a plus B into A plus C. So this will give us A plus C minus A minus B. So finally, we can try to simplify this uh, to give us C minus B upon A plus B into A plus C. So this we can call it equation 2. So if this is the common difference here, which is D, and this is the common difference between these two, and that is D prime, then the two must be the same. So we shall say, so for an AP, for an AP, D must be equal to D prime. In other words, equation 1 must be equal to equation 2. And if that is the case, then we shall have B minus A, we shall have B minus A divided by A plus C into B plus C equaling to C minus B over A plus B into A plus C. So we are equating the two equations. So we are equating B minus A upon A plus C into B plus C with C minus B upon A plus B into A plus C. So that is what we are equating. The two must be the same since for an AP the common difference should be the same throughout. So from here we can try to simplify this. This is A plus C, this is A plus C. So, so this and this will cancel out. We remain with B minus A upon B plus C which is equal to C minus B upon A plus B. Now let us come back to the question. We want to show that if this these two are in arithmetic progression, then also these ones here form an AP. But if you have A squared, you have B squared, and you have C squared, when do the two or three terms here form an AP? Is when the common difference here is the same as the common difference here. In other words, B squared minus A squared should be equal to C squared minus B squared. If this is true, then it means the common difference between A squared and B squared is same as the common difference between uh, B squared and C squared. And for that case, if we are able to get this, then we shall have proved uh, that A squared, B squared, and C squared are actually the consecutive terms of an AP. So we are looking for this, basically. Now, if that is the case, let us try to simplify. So this is same as B minus A into A plus B. 
which is same as C minus B into uh, B plus C. So we can try to have this as B minus A into a, uh, this can also be written as B plus A. Uh, then this is same as C minus B. This likewise can be written as C plus B. So this is a difference of two squares, which gives us B squared minus A squared, which is equal to C squared minus B squared. So when you look at this expression and the expression we are looking for, we are looking for B squared minus A squared is equal to C squared minus B squared. And that is the actual expression we are getting. So after getting this, then it actually implies uh, that uh, therefore, since B squared minus A squared is equal to C squared minus B squared, if this, this is true, because this is the common difference between the common difference between uh, B squared with A squared. And this one here is still the common difference between uh, C squared and B squared. So in actual sense, when this one happens, then it means A squared, B squared, and C squared are actually uh, the consecutive terms of an arithmetic progression. So since this one is true, uh, then A squared, B squared, and C squared are consecutive terms, are consecutive terms of an arithmetic progression. And that will be proved. Yeah.